Welcome in to the CHGO Bulls post game. That's brilliant. Coming to you live from our studios here in West Loop, downtown Chicago. I am Peck, Bulls underscore Peck. Big Dave, bow. B-A-W-L Sports, our pal and producer on the controls with the great Javante. Shout oh, out to that, that header. Brilliant. Joey's Bathers, he's at Joey's Bathers. He's in Goon of Will the Night. Will go. Will join us later on tonight's post game to help us break down this 108-100 Bulls win Hit over it, the Joe. New York Knicks. Ah, Bulls win. win. Come on, Joe. Ah, Bulls win. win. Suck it, Knicks. Ah, Bulls win. win. You too, Patrick Ewing. Ah, Bulls win. win. All of y'all. Ah, Bulls win. win. Shout out to the chat. Ah, Bulls win. win. Shout out to Matt because the game's over. Ah, Bulls win. win. And shout out to Joey for the cool graphic. Ah, Bulls win. win. And shout out for the WrestleMania watch along party tomorrow, ah, baby. Join us. Bulls win. win. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Can, can, can I add something on top of your suck it, Patrick Ewing? Sure. Suck it, Pat Riley. Uh huh. Suck it, John Starks. Oh God, yes. Oh, suck it, Charles Smith. Mm hmm. Uh, I don't want to say suck it, Anthony Mason. I feel like that's in poor taste. He's no longer with us. Fair. Fair. But basically, anyone else that wore a Knicks jersey in the nineties. Greg Anthony. All of them can suck it. <laughs> Greg Anthony. Uh huh. They all can. Bulls Doc win. Rivers. Uh huh. John Starks again. <laughs> suck it. Bulls win. Derek Harper. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I can do this all night. <laughs> Thanks for joining us tonight, Bulls fans. Hope your weekends are off to a great start on this Friday night. If you're hanging out in the chat, one, do us a quick easy favor. Hit that like button. Do it, it for it. our friend Troll Joe. And throw us whatever comments, uh, thoughts, questions you have on tonight's game. We will get to as many comments in the chat as we can. Throw us a super chat if you're feeling generous tonight. We appreciate those, too. A uh, lot of love for Javante right out of the gate in the right chat. The gate. Don't bury the lead. Do not. Uh, Juan saying Javante should be goon of the night. Mm. Ayers Wade saying five of them. Dinko, five Javantes. Shout out to our guy, Ben Dean, who said, I want a five Javante shirt. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Idea. Ooh. Paul saying Javante winning sixth man of the year. Okay, I love that because as soon as he checked in tonight, mm -hmm. he was the first one off the bench for Billy. Yes. And so I just tweeted from the team account, sixth man of the year. <laughs> Why not? You know, why not, dog? You know, it can't his, go for most improved his player. His first like, and only appearance as the sixth man <laughs> thus far this season. Man. Give him the goddamn award. You know how good it had to feel for Billy when he's dealing with the injury to know exactly who he's going to bring in to, to replace it from the two, three, or four. Like when Kobe went down, and we'll get into that, but when Kobe went down, like – you knew immediately who he was bringing in. Immediately. Yeah. Like, it wasn't even a thought. It wasn't even recognition. Tory Crit, whatever, great. Dalen, uh-huh. I'm going to need me some Javante Green, and that's what's going to happen. And that's how it's going Truly. to be going down the stretch, man. We've seen Tory Craig make some spot starts recently, yeah. and, and even earlier on this season when Billy has tinkered with the lineup or out of necessity – Turned to Tory Craig, but yeah. at the start of that second half, it was not Tory Craig. It was not. Billy said, Hey, Javante, <laughs> and the other four Javantes, yes. get out there. The rest of y'all. Truly. Through. He I, did it all that in such a Javante Green way because it was done on the scoring end, right? Yeah. Dunks, incredible dunks to the point that his bench got a technical Dude. foul because they the were watching him get this dunk. The second dunk he had, the one where he just caught the ball on a quick cut, yeah. made a beeline. Of the, it was like a rock the cradle yes. reverse. Yes. It was like 80s MJ dunk contest shit. It was special stuff, man. God, I love him. Hit, hit a couple, hit a three, two attempts, but he hit the one three yep. that he attempted. Uh, of course, cutting to the basket, you know what I'm saying? Do it, did, did it in a myriad of ways on the offensive end. Defensive end, he's grabbing the rebounds. He's crashing the boards. Getting Dove on keys, the floor for loose balls. Key steals, man. Yep. He got some key steals for the Bulls down the stretch. So important. 
And the third phase of it, like you just mentioned, the diving on the floor. He created, like I talk about how you can turn rebounds and into 50-50 balls. Yeah. You saw him do that tonight. Yep. You saw him turn sure rebounds for the New York Knicks into 50-50 balls mm -hmm. for the Chicago Bulls. And, like, up for grabs. So who's going to get it? You saw him do that time and time again, man. It was great. It was awesome. And it couldn't happen to a more awesome human being because everybody loves Javante Green, bro. Truly. Who don't love A. Green? Uh, Connor <laughs> saying, build the Javante statue. <laughs> yeah. Alexander saying, Javante getting emotional at the end of the game really yeah. got me. Yeah. Shy Town saying, it's really at the point where Javante slander will not be tolerated. Getting up there. Who's slandering Javante? Seriously. At I don't this think point. Nobody is, and, and like, I mean, I think you posed the question to me earlier today when we were texting or maybe while we were watching the game tonight, but the. The question of how the hell was Javante Green not on an NBA roster yeah. until the Bulls signed him to that 10-day? Like, I know he was coming off that injury because he, he was dealing with a knee injury for a while. Yeah. But even coming off of that, to just be sitting there on the Warriors roster, you know, on that G League team, just chilling. Like, he's just out there, available, and... Yeah, the bull, and it took the Bulls to go through a bunch of catastrophic injuries yeah. for them to even look at him and get him back here on this team where he belonged. They man. turned to owner out Batim. No slander. No. Before, no. These are facts. Uh, before get him. Get him. they said, hey, what's our old pal Javante up to? <laughs> get him, man. They not only turned to Batim, but they promoted him to the 15 man squad. <laughs> Instead of doing what? And, J and Javante was like, hey, man, I'm just here hanging out, eating my gas station burrito. Like, do you need me? Because I'm here. Warriors don't need me. Nope. None of the other 29 teams appear apparently need me. Nope. And he has come in, and between the three games he played on that 10-day contract and the first game tonight on his we sign you to the rest of the season contract, Bull's most valuable player, too, man. And that's only a slight exaggeration. Slight. Like, you know, I see people in the comments giving love to Io. We'll get to him. Damar hit some oh, big we'll buckets to tonight. We'll get to you know, all of them. Yes, but, like, we've been talking all season long about how this Bulls team is missing a little bit of crazy. Yes. And uh, oftentimes come out flat for one reason or another. They're missing. Mm. Yep. Javante brings... Mm. Yes, he does. Yes, he does, man. And, and we have known that for years. It's not like it's new. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, his number was just still sitting there collecting dust. Like, the athleticism he brings. Did we have that? No. We did not, man. We didn't have that. The the extra mm, diving onto the floor for the loose balls, creating the 50-50 balls. Did we have that? Not all the time because Alice Caruso isn't out there all the time. You know, he gets hurt sometimes. He, he got hurt. We'll discuss that later. But it ha he... He has to be guarding their best player. So his comes in spurts. So you just need another guy kind of doing that dirty work, which is why I would talk about that with Daylon Terry a lot, why I thought that – why I see that to be his role. You yeah. know what I mean? Is that kind of guy. Javante's there to do it. Like, let me show you how it's really done. And then the getting the crowd hype because he's just providing highlight real stuff. Just your bitch got a technical foul. <laughs> And Tory look, Craig's son look, had yes. to say, hey, dad, calm, calm down, down, go man. back, to, Get the back to the bench, dude, relax. It was a reverse dunk. No, kid, it wasn't just a reverse dunk, my man. It was a reverse dunk that we're not used to seeing. So you just gave state to some lions who ain't eight months. And that's all that was. That's why that reaction was like that. You and I flipped out. When you watched the replay, Joey was like, what are y'all so, I mean, out about? And we're like, it was, because we ain't seen this. It was one of the craziest dunks I've seen all season, in-game yes. dunks I've seen all season, and not just from the Bulls. Yes. You know, like it's Anthony Edwards has the dunk of the year sure. award wrapped up. Okay. We know this. But that second Javante dunk, that slashing reverse freaking win. Wow. Yes. It, it was unbelievable. It was special to watch. And when the whole game stopped, I was like, wait, it. They call a foul or something? Like, I didn't know what happened. And I thought they were taking it away, and I thought it didn't count. And then I was like, oh, no, the Bulls bench just lost their mind because they just saw him do this like it was nothing. And it was like his third dunk of the game. Like, that was that one. And then the one, Matt, where he got it, he just dunked on one of those Knicks players and yelled at him and then looked at his hand when he did it. And then on the other end, he got another one off a real slick pass from Io, got another two-hand jam, man. Injecting excitement back into your team. Allowing your offense to run and, and to do things in transition, which is I.O. specialty. You know yeah. what I mean? And a few other guys, what they do well. 
just makes life easier. How about the DeMar DeRozan pass Whew. from I don't know how he pulled that out of his behind, but he did and Dude. tossed it behind his shoulder over his back to Javante with the elbow three-point shot. Like, it, it, it was all clicking and all working, and it couldn't happen to a more awesome person. And, like, which, by the way, that was maybe the fourth or fifth insane DeMar driving into the paint, getting caught between amongst yeah. the trees and finding some miraculous way to kick out to a three-point shooter. You've been doing it all season. We've seen so many of those passes from Seriously, DeMar this season, yeah. which, by the way, DeMar had a team-high 10 assists for the Bulls tonight. Yeah. Uh, he started by facilitating and yes. then just got the Bulls a few buckets yeah. in the second half when they needed DeMar buckets. And in that fourth quarter when you had to just continue to go bucket for bucket with the Knicks, right. man. DeMar was there. Um. People in the comments still throwing love at Javante. Connor saying he brings the nasty. Yeah. Rob saying Javante is the dark horse to win most good of the night awards this season by only playing like 15 games. <laughs> Not even 15. This was game number four yeah. for Javante. Yeah. The Bulls have five regular season games left. Yes. That's nine. Phew. And hopefully only one more after that. But they won't. Uh, we don't know yet. Let's keep playing. Oh, uh, man. Brandon E. also in the comments pointing out I think a, a valid observation. The Bulls let Javante go in order to sign Javon Carter. Yes, 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 Come on, and yes. Son. Um, Javon Carter, not a DNP tonight. He got out there for, I think, uh, about 30 seconds. He did? Uh, I, don't, I don't even notice that, bro. I think really. so. Uh, he is in the box score as oh, wow. having checked into the game. Wow. Uh, and... Does have a Tony Snell in the box score? Oh, of course. So I mean, I don't even recall. I don't recall Javon all, entering bro. the game at all I'm at any real. point tonight. Can y'all remind us if do you all recall Javante being? I mean, not Javante, Javon Carter being in the game in the chat? Because honestly, but I don't. I don't recall it. It does. I mean, as much as we can enjoy a night like this as Bulls fans, we're like, oh, Javante, an old fan favorite, yeah, coming in and just giving the Bulls a game that they needed, yeah. To get this win against this Knicks team. They needed every single ounce of that Javante game. Yeah. And you're like, and th like the roster building and the people doing the roster building yeah. and some of the decisions that have been made. <laughs> it's like, what are you looking at? What are you seeing? And, it's, and how don't you feel that for and, your team? And to be so gung-ho about essentially hashtag run it back yeah. for three years running. <laughs> And that being a guy that you could be like, well, you know, we can, we, we can, we can let him go. Yeah. It's like, I, okay, I get it. It's like, we've been complaining for years about how the team does not have enough three-point shooting. Yeah. Javante is not known as being a, a real three-point shooting threat. Sure. You mentioned that he knocked down one tonight. Yeah. And that was always the case with Javante when he was here on his previous stretch. Yeah. Uh, of his Bulls career. Some nights, Javante would knock down a couple threes. You and you would be like, thanks, Javante. Mm -hmm. And he would provide that in addition to what he gave you as a hustle player, as a defense player, Correct. as a just keep the ball moving on offense player, much in the same vein as Alex Caruso. Yes. What, what he does also, Matt, and yes, everything you're saying, what he also does is he's, he's a great bridge for guys to get rest on because when certain guys come out and it's time you know, for them to finally get some rest, the Bulls didn't lose too much because of the way Javante was playing. They actually gained you know, a few things because of the way that he was playing and allow guys to actually get a little bit of rest yeah, and get some time off the floor, which was awesome to see. Like Caruso ended up with 32. I know some of that is because, you know, he went out with a few minutes left, but it was like he was off the floor and you wouldn't even remember him being on the floor right. in certain instances. Uh, Kobe White, who's got, got his injury, you immediately were like, oh, man, I'm dreading this. By the time that fourth quarter came around, you were just focused on the game. You was just like, oh, man, it's the way Javante playing. We're we going to be all right this game. At least we, we can put in the effort. Let's see if we can get this victory. And then just the timely IQ. This team was sorely lacking some IQ. You know I love basketball IQ, Matt. But just watching how he cuts and guys already knowing where he was going. Vooch hit him with a couple. You saw Io hit him with a couple. You mentioned uh, DeMar DeRozan with hit 10 assists. He hit him with a couple because they knew where he was because he was always in the right place. He knew exactly what to do out there. That makes it easier for your guys and for a team that likes to pass the ball but can only pass it to people who can be dynamic and explosive sometimes. And that is Devontae Green. It's great to have back on his team. But Matt is right. What the hell are y'all looking at, bro? Up in that front off. What are you seeing? 
to say, oh, well, we don't need the I athleticism. Mean, so Ant in the comments saying, to be fair, Javante was considered damaged goods. I'm glad he's back now. Javante was not healthy. My man, we, we got a ton of damaged goods on our squad, bro. It's not like the Bulls have been rolling that successful keeping a healthy roster of any kind. You feel me? Um, and I feel like it seemed like it's been a while that Javante has – been recovered from that injury yeah. that was lingering and frustrating for Bulls fans sure. just to not sure. have him out there and available. But sure. it, there was a long gap of time between when Javante was healthy to play and, uh, and you know, the Bulls, were, you know, again, it's like, it's, I think still worrying about smaller potatoes than like the bigger roster construction problems that have existed right. while the front office has sat on their hands for three years yeah. uh, and watch these middling or, slightly sub middling results you know f fall in i'm not going to grill them too much for letting javante go but it's just when you watch a game like tonight it's just a very fresh reminder of what he can do for any team but Matt, it's not the letting it go it's the moves that weren't made during the season when you know you needed something like this yeah and it took something really really drastic to happen for you to say you know what what's he doing and I'm talking, like you said, they brought up for Tim. You know what I'm saying? We bringing in Drell. We giving him a, a jersey. You know what I mean? Shout out, I'm glad he yeah. got his jersey. And shout out to his home Dude. country for seeing him in his he jersey. Promoted him to that two-way. But are we He was away? at Team Picture Day yesterday. <laughs> he was there. Henry Drell. Representing, man. He ain't playing. That's the point I'm trying to make is he ain't playing. So you were giving that spot to a dude who you know is not playing, but – it took something drastic and catastrophic to happen to your front court to say, you know what? I wonder what he's doing. Let me go check in on him. You saw him when you went out west. I remember that. Yeah. That was the first time of me seeing him. And I was like, oh, man, I forgot he was even uh, uh, out there. I, I didn't even know he was on the G League roster right there. But you need to be better than me. <laughs> That's what we're saying, dog. I don't want to be asking these questions. I want to just, you know, we, this should be simple. This, some of this stuff should be simple. Not everything is clearly, clearly. That's why you get to check you do. But some of these things, yeah, man, should be a little more simple to do than it seems like it's being made. Yeah. Uh, we got we to gotta take our first break. But uh, Evan D12 in the comments said, uh, what did Stacey King mean when he said there's five Javantes out there? Oh, do you think? Evan, that? are you new here? Do you think? Are you a new Bulls fan? It's okay if you're a new Bulls fan. Shout out to you. Uh, but... Stacy, uh, Stacy and five Javantes has been a thing for four years now. It's been a minute. It came back. Came back. Because Javante came back. Yeah. All five Javantes mm -hmm. came back. Yeah, they did. Uh, but if that's a genuine question, it's because when Javante's out there on the court, there are five of him. Yeah, they are. Uh, all right. First break. We will come back. We will hear from Will to Go Gotley. We will get to more of y'all's thoughts and comments on tonight's game. And it's a W, so we got a goon. Uh, Dave, who's first? Empire! Ooh! The people who also bring you good enough to know. That's right. Empire today, man. You always want to get your floors right. And you want to get your floors smooth. And you do it with Empire today. Because you get that shop at home convenience, the right product for your needs, quick and professional installation, and a low price guarantee. Empire today is the best place to get new flooring. So, you know, they're going to have copycats. It's what happens when you're being great. People are going to copy you. But Empire can't be beaten on quality, service, speed. So competitors advertise low-quality products that Empire just will not carry. Empire won't promise the lowest prices because anyone who does that is putting some flooring in your home that they would not put in their own. Facts. And Empire don't roll like that. You want to know how we know? Talk to our people down in Phoenix. Talk to the PHNX crew. Go check out their floors, and they'll tell you how happy they are with what Empire has done for them. And our first, that virtual floor designer, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great way to see how the new floors will look in any space. It's easy. You know what you do? Just snap a pic, and instantly you will see how new floors will look in that room. And shopping for floors at that big box store, that's frustrating. You don't want to do that. Mm -mm. I mean, you go and you gotta wake up on that Saturday you know you want to sit around and do nothing because you've been working all week. But no, you got to get up and go to the big box store. And you know who's going to be at the big box store. 15-year-old Brad just starting there right now. <laughs> yeah, I'll help you today. What do you need today? Well, Brad, you know, I'm just looking for some new flooring. Oh, I don't know about flooring. 
I don't know. But you're in the flooring department, Brad, so I need you to just actually show me some samples. I don't know what samples are in 15. That is frustrating to start your Saturday. You don't want to do it that way. Stay at home, man. You got that shop at home convenience with Empire today. They help customers shop for floors where they use their floors so you can see exactly what their new floors will look like in that home, man. It's a beautiful thing. And they service their own warranties. So if there's any issues, you just call Empire, man, and they service the warranties themselves. That is absolutely amazing. So why don't you just go ahead, schedule that free in-home estimate. Uh, today, all listeners can receive a $350 discount when they use the promo code CHGO. That's $350 off is what you're going to get when you use that promo code CHGO. Restrictions apply. See Empire t- see EmpireToday.com slash C-H-G-O for details. 588-2300. Troll Joe! Empire! Today. Troll Joe was ready. Yes, he was. Post game tonight also brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks, the Picks. largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They're the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS these days. It's just you against the numbers. That's it. That's Instead it. of battling thousands of other players, including pros, sharks, Dante DiVincenzo's. <laughs> All you do is pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections for the game that you're excited to watch, and then watch the winnings roll in. Woo! Whether it's NBA, <laughs> and we got NBA playoff action right around the corner. Right there. NHL. Right there. And, of course, college basketball. Still not done. Still ain't done. Uh, bull, uh, men's Final Four action happening mm-hmm. tomorrow night. Mm. Shout out to South Carolina and yes. the women's Final Four who advanced, taking down NC State earlier. Yes. Iowa UConn locked at 51 as we speak in the final minute of the third quarter going Ooh, to the fourth. It's getting action. Real. Getting real. Action. And you could have made some picks on that action yes. with prize picks. You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks turn ten dollars into a thousand dollars with basketball hockey and that's right college hoops entries today on prize picks america's number one fantasy app go to prizepicks.com slash chgo use that code chgo for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars that's prizepicks.com slash chgo promo code chgo pick more pick less it's that easy easy with prize picks yeah yeah love it need it uh it. wanted to Circle back and, and touch on Io, who I did see people in the comments talking about. Um, you know, Javante, huge game. Damar, some big uh, buckets uh, to carry the Bulls home. Yes. But Io, again, mm-hmm. this trend is more aggressively trending. Mm-hmm. Io is the Bulls' for, first quarter offensive spark. Thomas. Yep. He is becoming that role more and more this season. He has embraced that role. He had seven of the Bulls' first nine points out of the gate mm. with two good drives mm. and then just a confident rise and fire three on a kickout pass. Yes sir. yes, sir. And he ends the first half with 17 points. Yes, sir. He finished with 24, so, you know, qu- quiet it down a bit, but still an efficient 10 of 20 shooting night from Io. Also chipping in on the boards with six, five dimes, two steals. Ooh. This is just, you know, I, I, I think I saw our buddy, the GOAT, tweet recently in one of his many 20-point games. Like, is Io DeZuma just a every night 20 points per game kind of scorer now? Yeah. Because he's not averaging that this season, but. It just feels like that. Tonight, especially, as you mentioned, a night when Kobe White goes down. Yeah. You need that offensive punch from someone other than DeMar. Yes. And Javante was like, hey, I'm here. I can do that. <laughs> right. But is the wild card. Yeah. Io is now becoming less of a wild card 20-point scorer, but someone you expect that from, he did it again tonight. Yeah, man, and that's a beautiful feeling, knowing you can go into a game and you can expect certain positive things from your team, especially certain positive things from a player uh, like Ayo Dosumu, man. You're right, man. Like, he's the, becoming the tone setter. That's what he is. Like, we hear Joey say it all the time, who's getting their first bucket, it's Io first bucket. And that's usually what it's going to be. And it was that way again tonight. Ayo getting the first bucket. Ayo, it just seems like he's at least getting the first five to seven points. It reminds you of like Bill Cartwright or Luke Longley in those days when they would just get those first six points for the Bulls. That's mm-hmm. what it was. Ayo is taking it upon himself to set the tone and say, we are playing this way. And why I like it so much is you have to follow his style. 
it's not going to be slow and methodical with Io DeSumo. It's going to be fast. And he's letting you know this is the tone that we're playing at, guys. So get on my level, all right? Because we are running, all right? I was running. We are running out here. Mama said they'd take me anywhere. <laughs> they was my magic shoes. <laughs> oh, Forrest. <laughs> but, dude, like, he's going to run, dog. And he's going to get out there and do his thing. And you just love seeing stuff like that, especially from a young guy like that. But also, Matt, you mentioned 20, but you mentioned those six rebounds. That's also huge. The five assists are also huge as well uh, for that guy because Kobe going out, as you mentioned, somebody's going right into that role, and Ayo just steps right in it that is so seamless and so smooth that you don't even worry about it anymore, man. Yep. And just going, being a dude that I can know that is going to get you at least seven attempts from the three-point line, yeah. you know, and might and will hit three to four of those attempts. He's just becoming super reliable, somebody you can not pencil in, but put it in pen that it's going to be double-digit points for Ayo DeSumo, and now it's becoming to the point where it might be 20 points you can expect. Right. Um, and, and speaking of the, those uh, you know, confident three-point shots, mm -hmm. I, I will, just because it was such a crucial moment in the game, n not nitpick, but... Just point out something that I, I oh. both simultaneously loved yeah. and didn't love yes. from Io tonight. And you going. probably know where I'm going. Yes. He finished three of seven from downtown. The, f the two misses that were consecutive, confident, rise and fire threes on uh, the heels of back-to-back -back offensive rebounds. Mm -hmm. It's the fourth quarter. It's clutch time. I, th I believe it was Bulls 101, Knicks 94. Let me uh, find it real quick. Okay. And, uh, you know, the Bulls had that opportunity to really put the Knicks away. Yeah. And got consecutive offensive rebounds. Yeah, it was 101-94 with just under four minutes to go. And Io gets two kickout passes in a row off offensive boards. Yep. And so, like, you get a fresh 14-second shot clock. Yeah. And you're thinking the clock is on your side. Use it. And instead, Io just launched both yep. times yep. without hesitation, which, again, I respect that confidence that Io has built into his three-point game. Sure. In that moment, I was like, maybe swing that ball around to the other side. Relax. Maybe, maybe take a few more ticks off this clock right now. When, when it happened, I said, I told you, I was like, this is why I'm not the coach. Because after that first one, that time, I would have been called immediately. As soon as I saw him get that ball and think about it, like, nope, 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 time out, time out, time out. You got to value that clock. And but you're right. Like you're like I value that confidence. I yes. really do. I don't I don't mind the confidence to take that shot cuz if he hits that shot, he was going to he, he was going to get a big old second. Right. You if he hits I mean? either of those threes, dagger game over. Yeah. Hero. And it I ended up being Vooch who hit the dagger three, right. which, you know. And I was going to be Who had that on out. their bingo card? Right. Nobody. <laughs> I was going to be like shut up, Dave, suck it, Dave, suck it. Dave. <laughs> That's what you were going to hear, you know? But I appreciate and I admire that kind of confidence that he came in there with. And I want to see that continue. But also, you have to know the situation of the game and what was going on right there. Because you know that's how the Knicks play. You know that run was coming. You know it was expected the Knicks were going to make a run. And you were playing so well to that point and battling and getting the ball and getting offensive rebounds and getting the 50-50 balls and getting yourselves those possessions that you wanted immediate value for it, which yeah. is running the clock. He misses both of those. What immediately happens? Jalen Brunson gets the ball, goes down, scores, and won. And it cuts the game back back down, you know what I mean, to that four-point lead. So, yeah, you just wanted to value the possessions a little more. But I feel him. I understand what the mental was on it, and I like where it was, but I just needed to slow down just a little bit so we can value the basketball a little bit more in that situation. Yeah. Um, uh, Rob in the comments saying, I like how consistent I was becoming. Uh, Sahism? Sahim saying people uh, were talking um, cash shit about Io last season, and now look at our boy. And saying, to me, Io's officially joined Kobe in becoming a consistent NBA player, just waiting on Pat to complete the trifecta. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> why Why we got to bring Patrick Williams into this, this happy conversation? You hear the break screech in his brain when you say that. My God. I mean... I, I saw Patrick in those team photos yeah. that the Bulls posted yesterday, and yeah. I was like, uh, uh, he's we got to deal with Pat this offseason. You do. You got to give Pat. Hey, man. Whoop. Qualifying offer? I'm going to worry about it then. I want to talk about the victory that we had tonight, man, because there's other players I need to throw, throw love at, and one of them you just mentioned was Vooch. 
Vooch deserves his love. We uh, we were trashing him in pregame a little oh, bit because he deserved there have been it. some Vooch stats flying around <laughs> NBA and Bulls oh Twitter God. recently that are gross. P U, including the of the all NBA players who have taken at least 150 wide open threes, which means no defender within six feet of you when you take that three. Yeah. Of 94 NBA players to have at least 150 of those three-point attempts, Vooch, 94th in percentage. Uh-huh. 94 of 94 uh-huh. at 28.5%. I hate it. And then tonight, two of two from downtown. Oh, I hate it. I hate it so much. Uh, not the two of two, but the fact that he was 94%. Baby steps. Hit the one from the baseline, but the one at the top of the key was huge. That, that was the game right there. He hit that three. It was over. And he was wide open. You know what I'm saying? At the same time. So, yeah. it was good to see him actually do that. I lo- I really enjoyed the way he played, too. He played a little differently. Like, he made some moves I haven't seen him make in a while. Like a little spin up under a scoop layup that he had on Hartenstein. Mm-hmm. I saw him uh, actually being physical inside. You know, going in and getting those rebounds. Like, he earned those 13. They didn't just fall to him. And he, he had to go get those. He, t- he turned a lot of... 50 uh, offensive rebounds for the Knicks in the 50-50 balls by just trying to tap it, you know, and keep it on the board like that. I appreciate him going and putting that kind of effort in. And, of course, the six assists that he had as well. It is great to have a big dude who can actually do that and get those passes to Javante Green when he's cutting and make his life a little bit easier. So I appreciate what Vuce did tonight. I just need to see it again and again and again. But he deserves love tonight, no question about it. Indeed. Uh, Joe, I heard a jingle. Uh, do you want to bring in Goat, or do you want to knock out a second quick ad read and then bring in the Goat? I think we, with the timing, a quick ad read here. Quick. And then the Goat. Quick ads, then we'll bring in the Goat on the other side. Quick ads. If you haven't hit the thumb yet, now's the time. Do it. Do it. What hit else the should thumb. they do, Dave? You should chill. Yes. You should relax. And you should do that. By sipping on some cold Coors Light. So whether it's that team that's stressing you out or it's life in general, things can feel just a little bit chaotic. But Coors Light helps you find those moments to chill all year long. And I'm talking about cold lager, cold filtered, and just always ready for that smooth taste and refreshment. Cold as the Colorado Rockies. I love it so. It's delicious. I endorse it. And just to make it even more awesome and smooth and cool, y'all, guess what? Guess what's going to happen when we do our watch along? I'm going to need y'all to tune in because we'll be giving away something. Give away. We're going to be giving away something on that watch along. What are we giving away? Usually I will hold it back from y'all, but I'm going to give you a sneak peek at it because y'all are here today and the Bulls win. Let's give me a sneak. Let's give me a peek. Let me get this up here. We will be giving away the Coors Light Air Jordans, bro. What? The Coors Light ones. Oh, these are official and legit. These are serious. This is happening. No, these are this, real Jordans. These are real. These are real Jordans right here. These are the official Coors Light ones right here, man. Check them out. Look at them. Love them. You want them. Limited edition item. You better believe they limited edition. Let me get that other one right there. I, lo- I love that Chicago Ooh. Sky Baby Blue on those. That's real nice. Yes, it's not Cassie. just Coors Light Blue. It's Chicago Blue. Yes, Cassie. These are sick. Absolutely right. You can win these. These could be yours. All right? You can have these. Tune in to our watch along on Sunday. More details will be on the way on how you guys could tune in and win. But these guys, you can win these, man. So come rock with us, man, and keep enjoying your course. Make sure you go to Instacart and get you some course light. Because it is the delicious. Oh, I love it so. CoorsLive.com slash CHGO basketball. Bow right there, ladies and gentlemen. Got you. It's Coors Light. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Uh, also, a reminder to, if you aren't already, give serious thought and consideration to becoming a CHGO diehard. We tell you about the perks. There are many. Uh, discounts on all of our fun parties, events, takeovers, uh, Draft party, mm-hmm. CHGO Bears coming up later this mm-hmm. month. Mm-hmm. Uh, space is limited for those, but our diehards do get a discounted ticket price on those. Of course, 20% off every time you shop at our CSGO merch locker, including, of course, the Dope Sub Zero shirt. Mm-hmm. Also available in hoodie. Big Dave's bros rocking them both mm-hmm. these days. And uh, shout out to some of our newest 
diehards that joined the Cool Kids Club this week. Michael, Taylor, Tim, Loof, Donovan, Andrew, Nick, Corey, Jacob, Brandon, Carrie, James, Michael, Adam, Jason, Justin, and Brett. Mm. Shout out to each and every one Shout of you out. for d- joining the CSGO Die Hard family. We appreciate you. coming along. It's your turn next, those of you who hang out with us every night, every game night, every podcast, and haven't signed up yet. Your turn. Pennies a day, y'all. That's it. Pennies a day. Don't cost you nothing. Uh, now, I believe, Joe, it's time to bring in a certain animal. That's why it's the goat! The goat! There Joining us is. on the Go Talk Hotline, it's our guy, Willie Go Gottlieb. Follow him for all of his Bulls reporting and updates. Will underscore Gottlieb. Goat, crazy game. Bulls lose Kobe uh, after just 14 first half minutes. Io gives him a big first half. Javante Green on his first game on the new contract. Monster night, career high points and rebounds. What um what what did you make of this uh gritty win over Tibbs's Knicks? Oh, so gritty. <laughs> um you know, I just feel like something anomalous has happened in every single one of the last like 10 games. It's like the Minnesota Timberwolves shoot like two of 47 on threes or the Bulls shoot 19 of 21 on threes. It just feels like every game, like something kind of crazy is happening that's either helping the Bulls win or, uh, you know, pushing them into a loss. And today, obviously, it was Javante with uh, Kobe and Alex both uh, hurting their ankles. Alex was later in the fourth quarter, so it didn't impact the outcome as much as uh, potentially Kobe could have. But, I mean, just the energy that he plays with, the way that he... Uh, just sparks life into this team. I think, you know, DeMar said it after the game, like they really need that. They really needed an injection of woo into this team. And uh, you saw it in so many different ways, the back cuts, the transition, the dunking, the three pointers, the offensive rebound tip ins. Like there was just so many of those, like, I mean, the, this term has kind of fallen out of vogue this year, but randomness last year, it was always about randomness and finding ways to inject, you know, non like, bogged down half court isolation pick and roll basketball into their half court offense well this is this is what that looks like this is exactly what they needed the 13 off or 13 total rebounds the career high 25 points i mean just such a breath of fresh air for this team to get some easy baskets i don't think they win this game without him obviously you can just like take away the points and it doesn't work out that way but just the the way that he was changing momentum the way that every time the knicks started to put together a run in that second half like the Bulls got an offensive rebound put back, or they got an easy basket coming down the other end. And I think so much of that was Javante and the and the burden that he takes away from DeMar with creating some of those easy baskets. So um, he really has been great, but like today was just out of this world. Uh, four of the Bulls players had double-doubles. Uh, DeRozan had 20 points, 10 assists. Vooch had 16 and 13 uh, Javante, 25 and 13, and Drummond with 10 and 16. Uh, I've never really seen that, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, from this team, especially uh, this season. Uh, do you credit more of this to a, Jav- a guy like Javante Green who comes in and kind of, as you mentioned, that injection of woo? Or or was it scheme? Or, or how do you look at it where the Bulls would get four players that have double-doubles tonight? Well, I think part of it is the Knicks missing a lot of shots. They shot 43%, but much worse in the first half. Uh, can't get rebounds if the other team is missing shots, or making shots, rather. Um, so that was a big part of it. But I think also the just the fact that they were attacking the class so hard, I think, as we've talked about the last couple of games here, like they recognize that that's an area where they can kind of press on teams and get them to give in a little bit. Um, you know, the, the Knicks are playing. They got Mitchell Robinson back, but they're not playing two bigs at the same time. Uh, Randall's obviously out for the year. They're playing Ananobi, who just came back from injury at the four a little bit. Josh Hart left the game in the first quarter. So I think it was just like an opportunity that they saw where we can put a lot of pressure on this team. They got 19 offensive rebounds, which I think ties their second most, uh, sorry, ties their fourth most of the year. So huge amount of offensive rebounds ties the second total rebounds for a game. Um, so you're playing a couple of bigs, you're playing a couple of guys on the wing who like to attack the offensive glass and the other team's missing shots. I think it's just kind of like those things all kind of coming together at the same time and resulting in uh, a lot of second chance points and keeping them off the offensive glass. The Knicks are a very good offensive rebounding team too. So clearly a priority. I mean, this was, they've had three days off to prepare for this game and it seemed like they really executed everything that they probably talked about because they've got this team now two more times in the next five games. So uh, they were. It seems like they were kind of treating it like a series and kind of coming into this understanding 
you know, here are the ways that the Knicks can really make you pay and here are the things we can do to counter it. And I think they executed well and credit to them because they really needed a win like this after you know, the last 10 or so games have just been really back and forth, really not convincing one way or another. Um, and I think they really understand that they need to close the season out strong. And this was a good first step. Yeah, we, were, we were talking in pregame, Dave, about how yeah. uh, the Knicks have been an elite offensive rebounding team all season long. Number one in offensive rebounding percentage over the past 15 game stretch. And the Bulls out rebounded them on the offensive glass 19 to nine tonight. Mm. Huge victory for the Bulls there. Mm. Will, a lot of our fellow Bulls fans in the comments hoping for some positive news or updates on Kobe White and Alex Caruso, both of whom left the game tonight with uh, with injuries. What can you tell us? Did you learn anything from Billy? Did you get a chance to chat with either Kobe or Alex after this game? No, guys don't really talk after they suffer an injury. So usually they're kind of off limits to the media uh, in that scenario. And Billy just kind of came out after the game and said, both of them left with ankle injuries, don't know the severity, and we're going to have to just see how they feel tomorrow. My guess is they go into Saturday's game with the Magic as questionable and, you know, hopefully won't need much time off. My gut tells me that Kobe will probably get a night off, but uh, Caruso will be back in action. That's just a complete guess, so um, speculating on my part. But um, it just, you know, I I think they – Kobe with the hip, like it just – it feels like a situation where they might just want to be a little bit more careful with him going into – the play in. So uh, we'll see, but hopefully Cruzos wasn't too bad either. We just don't know yet. And we'll probably not get, get word until I think they uh, said no media availability, no practice tomorrow. So probably won't hear anything until pregame on Sunday. So No, no mention of like an MRI or any like serious, like further testing or evaluation no. for either of them. Just sort of like, you know, Kobe rolled an ankle. Alex kind of re-aggravated something that was already bugging him because Jalen stepped on him. Yep. Yeah, okay. um, they may or may not do imaging. I'm not sure, but uh, even in that scenario, like that's typically not a sign of anything major. If they saw something on the imaging, that would be, but uh, they might just do stuff precautionary, um, but it, it doesn't seem like these are going to be major issues. Well, we uh, talked about uh, Ayo Dusumu also and just how he's to the point where you can kind of put it in pen that he's going to be double digits in points and it's getting to the point where it's almost in pencil where it could be 20 points a, a game for him 24 points six rebounds five assists uh two steals what is it that you're seeing when you're there that you see that is the the real change on the floor for him like i understand the mental has changed i understand his body has changed what are you seeing though that he's doing on the floor where you're like oh yeah this is different I think today they got him a bucket on the first play. They they uh, drew up an action for him to get downhill for a layup. It's a play I read about for a uh, Goat 101, I believe, a couple of weeks ago. You can go find that. But um, you get him in a situation where he opens the game with a layup, Like that's that feels good for any player. That's like gets him on the right foot. And then he scored, I think, seven quick points or seven. He was seven of nine at halftime or something like that. So um, I think he's just playing with a lot of confidence. I think he is starting to understand his – pacing a little bit better where he has the opportunity to turn on the burners and and blow by people, whether it's in transition or in the half court. And then the jump shot. I mean, he hit his first couple of threes. When that starts going for you, I think it's just a lot easier to get into a rhythm. But the way that he's able to kind of weave into the paint, he's got that little, you know, one-handed jump hook kind of shot that he gets into at times. I think he just feels like there's a couple of different moves that he can go to on a more reliable basis. And I think when you have confidence in those it's a little bit easier to work towards them throughout the the course of a game if you're not really sure how am i going to get a shot off how am i going to you know create something for myself or am i just going to have to rely on somebody creating a a shot for me with a spray out to a corner three it's a little bit harder to you know take action to get those situations and so i think he's kind of in this position now where he's creating a little bit more that's the style of play that he was at illinois in high school like he had the ball in his hands and i think it probably feels a little bit more comfortable for him to be able to create his own shots in a lot of scenarios. And now I think he's got the tools and the understanding and the awareness to be able to do that. So I I think it's just kind of his game is starting to coalesce and come together in a way that feels comfortable for him. He's confident with it um, and the Bulls need it, right? Like they don't have a lot of perimeter scoring creation whatsoever. They rely on offensive rebounding. They rely on, you know, Javante creating back cuts and doing, you know, double clutch, you know, reverse dunks. They need somebody else to create something in the half court. And uh, I think I was just kind of 
default to, to becoming that guy with, with Kobe and Alonzo and uh, Zach all out. Like they need somebody to do it. And, and he's the, the capable one. Uh, Will, you've definitely been someone to remind uh, Bulls Nation that for all of the hype and enjoyment we've gotten out of Kobe's growth this season and Isles' growth this season, um, this team will go as far as DeMar DeRozan drags them. There is still a lot of truth to that. I'm curious what you thought of his game tonight because we saw DeMar really start tonight by facilitating. I think he had seven of his ten assists in the first half and then did the bulk of his scoring in the second, and, and all of it was needed. What did you make from DeMar tonight? Yeah, I mean, tough matchup for him, right? They've got OG that they can put on him, and I think in a lot of situations, you know, DeMar is either looking to pick on matchups where he can get the switch that he wants and go to work, uh, or he's just got a guy who's not as big and he can kind of bully. OG, all-world defender, he's strong. He's, like, not going to get moved off of his spots the way some of the smaller guys will, and he fights through screens and doesn't give up those switches. So I think that's just a tough matchup. They play together, so I think there's an element there, too, where OG kind of knows some of his tricks uh, and the way that he likes to draw fouls. Only four free throw attempts for Tamar tonight, and I think that kind of crystallizes that for me, that he just wasn't really able to get into his scoring bag the way that he normally does. But 10 assists, I think he was doing a really good job to still draw in the attention from the defense and then find guys around him. And it helps when you know your team is willing to attack closeouts, willing to attack the offensive glass uh, and, and create secondary shots that way. So um, I think DeMar is capable of taking over a game, obviously with his scoring, but I think these are good reminders that he can do it as a facilitator, as a point guard as well. Um, but it's just, I think, a, a tough matchup for him to have to go get 30 against a guy like OG, even though it's his first game back. I mean, they've got a bunch of really sturdy defenders that are smart, obviously very well coached, as we know, uh, that are not going to really be falling for all of his tricks. And, and so I think he had to kind of resort to some of his other tools that he has in his toolbox. Well, just another quick one. Um, Jalen Brunson, watching Jalen Brunson up close. It's, from here, it looks like watching, you know, kind of a football player, you know, play and a guy who uses the fact that he's small to his advantage when he's throwing elbows at you and, you know, kind of diving into you on those things. What do you think about his game and, and what you experienced uh, watching him tonight? It's a really good question. I'm glad you asked it because I was kind of realizing in the first half that this might have been like the first time I've seen Brunson in person, uh, or at least when he's been at this level. And, you know, a lot of times I prefer watching games on TV just because I feel like I can see the court a little bit better. But there's some elements when you're at the game, when you're watching in person, where you just can't get whatever it is uh, on TV that you can in person. And for me, with Jalen, it's like the leverage that he gets on some of these plays the way he, the, the way he gets so low to the ground the speed with which he's crossing guys over and getting from one side to the other um, just a really snappy quick player he's, he's always a step ahead um, he uses his body really well he draws fouls really well uh, I just I really enjoyed watching him play tonight because he's so crafty and creative and as you know a smaller guy it's a really tough thing to do when you're always going to be drawing the bigger wing defender you're always going to be going into the painted area where you know the bulls had two or three guys that were playing two bigs the uh knicks were playing bigs like there are a lot of bodies down there and he's still making plays he's still drawing fouls he's still getting to his spots and he's still making tough shots so i uh, i really enjoy him he's just another one of those guys similar to damar where he just gets where he wants to go and it's more a matter of like is he going to make that shot or is he going to miss it rather than like can you take him away from his game because he's just so crafty and so determined to get to his spots. All right, go before we let you go. Who's your goon love going to tonight? But wait, Will, wait, wait, wait. It's a curveball tonight. It's clearly Javante Green. He is goon of the night. The question is, which of the five Javante Greens Ooh. is goon of the night, sir? <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, post-game media Javante because <laughs> – he was doing some treatment or something. We were all waiting for him. The whole media scrum was waiting on Javante. It was his podium game. And he came in, and he's a super soft-spoken, quiet guy. Um, but he had this massive, like, glob of media in front of him asking him questions. And uh, Julia Poe from the Tribune asked him something about, like, you know, have you ever dunked so hard before that your whole team got a technical foul for it? And he was, like, kind of laughing and joking with that. And he's like, you know, I'm not going to help Andre pay for the fine on that one. So uh, I just feel like he is 
just such a good guy and the team is like so happy to have him back. They're happy that he came back from this injury, that he came back from fighting his way out of the G League and basically being out of the league. I mean, it's kind of surprising you can just sit here and say at this point, like, how come nobody picked him up? Well, nobody picked him up. The Bulls didn't pick him up. Uh, so it's just, I think, exciting to see the work that he put in and then to come back in his first game um, and put up a career high with the new contract. I, I just think that was really special. So uh, he was all smiles afterwards and he, he still kind of knows like, I am a role player. I have to fill the gaps. I have to offensive rebound. I have to cut. I have to defend. I have to get out in transition. I have to be an athlete. And like, that's my superpower. I can use those things to help the team win. Uh, and so just kind of hearing him talk about that after the game was really cool. Javon, that's the fifth Javon. That's the fifth one? That's the fifth one. Well, yeah, the post-game locker yes. room, it that's makes sense end. chronologically Correct. that that's the fifth one. Yeah, it's the fifth one. Yes. Go, we appreciate you, buddy. Bulls Nation, make sure you follow our guy, Will, for all of his Bulls reporting. Will underscore Godly. Read everything he writes. All C- allchgo.com is where you can find that. Will, have a great night, buddy. Get home safe. We will see you on Sunday for Sunday. Bulls Magic. See you guys then. Yes, sir. All right, Joe. It's that time. <laughs> Empire today! <laughs> floors, floors, floors! Brings you goon of the night, because all they do is floors, 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 no matter what. 580 to 300. Regular Joe! Empire! Today. Regular Joe is toasty today. I mm. like it. As I said, clearly, goon of the night is Javante Green. But the question is. Which of the five Javante Greens will be goon of the night? Matt Peck, we will start with you. Which of the five Javantes is goon of the night? Uh, I'm going to give my love to the diving on the floor for a loose ball late in the fourth quarter, Javante. Needed. Needed. There yeah. were a couple other loose balls the Bulls did not come up with tonight. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, Stacy even called out but Tim for not diving on the floor at one yes, point. Yes, he did. He absolutely um, did. Yes. Yes. I, look, the dunks were awesome. Knocking down a three from that DeMar pass that was incredible. Yes. Awesome. Yes. But the diving on the floor is why Stacy gave him the five Javante's nickname in the first place. That's true. And... As uh, as an addendum, mm-hmm. I, I appreciate what you're doing here mm-hmm. with the five Javantes and which one. Mm-hmm. I do also want to give a little bit of goon love sure. to our guy Andre Drummond. Yeah, oh, <laughs> because that man grabbed 16 <laughs> rebounds in 24 minutes. He did. He also had three steals. He did. And three turnovers. Yes, he did. Great Andre Goon shit. And some of those shots. <laughs> some of the most hilarious missed layup attempts oh, I've ever seen. So what Javante, num- I mean, yes, but man, Drummond did some goon shit tonight. What number would you say is that for Javante? Four. Four. Happened I late. I agree with you. Uh, what's his name again? Uh, Troll Joe? Troll Joe Vallis? No, no, regular Joe. Son of George and Lisa? You yeah, forgot oh, my name? Oh, what do you legend, mean? Legend, of George and Lisa. You forgot my name? No, these are jokes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my goon goes to the first Javante. Number one. Okay. I think, I think it's the first Javante. Okay. Go on. Roadhouse. He was kicked in the face. <laughs> he was kicked in the face he was tonight. Kicked in the face. Kicked right across the face. Went down. I was wait. That could have been the last we saw of him. Yeah. And it wasn't. And it was just the beginning of this beautiful Javante night. Mm. But on a night like that, the kicking in the face going under the radar, he he wore that. And so I got Javante number. Would, would you say that's you Javante? Say, you say one? that's one. I, you say that's Javante. It's either one or two. Mm-hmm. I'll give it to, when you say one, it's gonna be one. All right, Javante won. They are in. The votes are in. Well, goon of the night goes to crash. Javante won. First Javante is goon of the night because one, that's the offense. Yeah. And he had a career high in scoring tonight. He did. 25 points. 25 points. points. For Javante Green. <laughs> And just like Joey said, was kicked in the face. And Josh Hart was ejected because he kicked that first Javante in the face. Incredible. And, and that foolishness continued from Javante Green throughout the whole game. Listen, man, he was amazing. He was special. All five of those Javantes deserve it. But 
All, you did, all you did was make the five Javantes angry. Yeah, That's man. all you did. No, they'll be fine. You know what I mean? They're going to hang out. Everybody's going to be cool. First Javante, though, you get Goon of the Night, friend. I love that. Well done. I well love done. that. Well done. And congratulations to the Iowa Hawkeyes who advanced to the wow. national championship to face South Carolina. There it is. 71 69. Whoa. Came right down to the end. Uh, Iowa turned the ball over with about 10 seconds left. Uh, UConn gets the ball their last possession. They call an illegal screen. Oh, snap. And a little bit of a questionable call there with four seconds left. I, I couldn't watch it. An illegal screen? I, four- it was, I mean, to me, mm. I don't know if you make that. I'm, I'm not watching the whole mm. broadcast, but mm. it was definitely, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people Smart. talking about that one. <laughs> that's sad. I don't like that's it. Some, that's some Joey Crawford shit. Yeah, I gotta see it. I I don't like. I gotta see but it. But I'm okay with it. Yes, because oh. I picked Iowa. One thing I do have to plug is what's going on tomorrow up in here, ladies and gentlemen. Joey, you got the graphic or no? One thing that's going on. Who, Actually, we don't need no stinking you graphic. It. You made it, sir. I know, but I made it for Twitter, not for the show size. Ooh. So it's not CHGO come- WrestleMania. Yeah, we used there. it yesterday. I didn't. I don't know. I used it yesterday for Sarah. The same one that you sent me. I see. I used it yesterday. But I don't have it on my. This. I don't have it on this computer. Okay, send your Slack if you, if you want to see it. Just it's tell there. the people. Dave. It's there. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> it's there, dog. It's there. It's there. But C H G O WrestleMania watch along. The official one is going down, ladies and gents. And I, for one, am truly excited. <laughs> oh, I cannot wait. Fans are excited about this. I am truly excited about this. It'll be myself, the CHGO Blackhawks, and our guy Ryan from CHGO Cubs, and whoever else from the CHGO crew, sans this guy, will be showing up here to watch the show. Hey, can't wait to see it, man. We're going to celebrate. We're going to enjoy night one of WrestleMania. It was presented by Salernos. If you use the code CHGO, guess what you're going to get? 50% 50% off your order Woo. order from Salerno's on Grand Avenue. Use the one on Sir. Grand Avenue, ladies and gentlemen. Salerno's on Grand Avenue. C-H-G-O is the code. 50% off your order. WrestleMania Watch Party going down tomorrow. Starts at 6 p.m. I am very excited. There you go. The Rock says the he Rock. is also very excited. There you go. Come on, Joe. Shut up, bitch. I love it. <laughs> uh, I'm so excited for all you wrestling fans. Thank you Also very excited much. for the Salernos. Yes. Maybe save some for our watch-along Bulls magic on Sunday. We'll think about it. Maybe. <laughs> also, can we get some meat toppings on that pizza? Maybe. <laughs> uh, Joe, we got some super chats we got to get to before we get out of here. Let's do it. We do. We've got Let's three. Do it. Number one, this is from Flip JR. Side. From GR, aka What's up, JR? Flipside23. It never sounded right when states you would recycle that. There's five blank player name out here. That phrase belongs to Javante and Javante I, only. I don't disagree. I firmly agree with that I take. don't disagree, yeah. I, don't I disagree we, at all. And, and JR is right. We've heard Stacey say it a couple of times about other players. Yeah. There's five Caruso's or five right. whoever's out. Dalen. Right. I think you said it about Dalen a couple yeah, times. Five Dalen Terry's. Which, out by the way, Dalen, you know, quiet night, but two blocks, two steals. Yes. A couple of big defensive plays. And a bucket. Uh, but yes, the, the five Javante's catchphrase belongs to Javante only. Agreed. Agreed. Glad he's back. Uh, we got two from AK here. AK? So the first one, uh, good. By the way, AK, I don't know if, I don't know. Is this the first? AK Super Chat in a couple shows. He popped maybe? back in while you were out of town last weekend. Okay, I was going to say, it's great to have you back because yeah. I, I had noticed that, you know. So always love AK. I just, Absolutely. I didn't want to I didn't want to gloss over that. <laughs> Good win with the Javante. Other one, get your shit together. Flying around, drumming layups and or finger, finger roll attempts are such that you want to close your eyes but can't look away. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, That's, I could look away. <laughs> I, I do not need to watch. I don't need to see Anytime that. Anytime Drummond went up tonight under the basket, I was like, oh, here we go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it so. Made some free throws tonight, though. He did. Credit he to did. him. He's gotten so much better shooting his free throws, man. And another one from AK. Vooch, 94th percentile and open three mm-hmm. makes. Means he got all of his misses out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Mathematically, he can just sit back and make all of the attempts now. I like, mm. I like that philosophy. It's an interesting theory there. Yeah. Vooch just got all of his three-point bricks out of the way. Right. 
nothing but cash here on out. I hope that's the case. Two, man, two, two for two tonight. Two for two. He was and confidently. He knew it when he shot those shots, Inclu- man. including the dagger from the top of the key. Yeah, man. And hey, I, I've shared that well. theory of mine with you before, Dave. What toes on Which the line? is that no, even on nights when Vooch is playing like shit, mm-hmm. especially on nights when he is not playing particularly well. Yeah. And the Bulls will find themselves in a clutch situation because, of course, they always do. Yeah. And he will somehow knock down a big three when they need it. Yes. Yes. He will. Tonight is not the first time that that's happened. It's happened since I swear it's happened so many times. Kind of been here. I, I immediately think of like the Detroit game. Bulls fans groan and roll their eyes when they yeah. see Vooch launch up a three in a late game critical scenario. Because we all assume he's going to brick it. And then he just drilled that one. Dude, that Detroit game when we first had Lonzo, that first season was the first game of the year, and he was clanging them threes yep. until the fourth quarter when they really needed it, and he was cash. Until then. That's what it was, man. So we do, bro. Hopefully he continues that on because they got a big one coming up Sunday against the Magic, baby. True story. Uh, shout out and thanks again to JR and AK for the Super Chat. Shout out to everybody hanging out with us in the chat tonight. Hit that like button. Shout out to uh, Frank Cassie in the chat who reminded you all to hit that like button if you didn't do it yet. And as Dave just said, we will be back here Sunday Ooh, for Bulls Sunday, Sunday. Magic. Uh, we're not doing pregame, but we will be here from tip off, doing a live watch along presented by our friends at Coors Light and yeah. our friends at Prize Picks. Also, the watch along from the couch. Yeah, which will be cool. So Ooh. Oh, we on the couch this time. Yeah, so you I can like see that. how we how we watch the game. Oh, interesting. Usually, I we're didn't not, know that. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna I love that. Okay, portable, I get cranky when I can't recline while watching. The portable movies. setup on uh, on Sunday for All the right. watch along. Let's see how at I least go. we're gonna try. Let's see how I go. I love it. Tune in if you want those very limited edition. Coors Light Jordan mm-hmm. ones. Yeah, you got to be hanging out with us during our watch along on Sunday yes. because that is where we are going to share the link to submit for your chance to win those dope ass Coors Light Jordan ones. You know you want them. Uh, I think it was also Jr. Who, who's comment I saw earlier who said, "Does this sneakerhead really need those Jordan One cores?" Of course I do. Hey. Well done, sir. Well done. We will see you Sunday. Uh, Everybody, have a great rest of your Friday night. Have a wonderful Saturday. We will see y'all Sunday. Watch along live starts 5 p.m. Central Time. For Joey, for the GOAT, for Big Dave, I'm Peck. Much love and appreciation, Bulls Nation. See you every good. WrestleMania. Woo! Peace.